I think. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled city council meeting for February 3rd, 2020 at 7 p.m. Thank you all for coming. I know the kids in the back are excited to be here. <laughs> this, this will probably take just about four or five hours. Miss <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Burner, roll call, please, when you're ready. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilman Grimm. Here. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. <laughs> Our Heavenly Father, once again we come before you asking you to bless this group as we do the business of the city administration and for the city of New Carlisle. Please bless all of our first responders, our sheriff's deputies, our fire department and the EMS workers, along with all of our troops that are stationed across the seas. In God's name we pray, amen. 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 What allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Action on the uh, works, uh, work session for January 21st, 2020. Make a motion to accept the work session. Second. Council, any questions or discussion? No. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. <clears throat> Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And it's accepted 7-0. Thank you very much. And then we'll need a motion to accept the minutes for the regular, regular scheduled council meeting for January 21st, 2020. So do it. Second. Any discussion, council? No. Okay. Are you ready, please? Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Then it's accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. And that's communications. Mr. Bridge. You have a parks and rec board application? Yes. So, Kathy Wright and uh, ta 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 Tana Moeller, every Thank single you. time. Sorry. Um, Let's see, Council, um, do you have any questions, comments for either individual for the Parks and Rec Board? Would you like to just want to stand it up, please, just so we could get a good look up? Hi, <coughs> Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Are you sure? Um, could you guys just, uh, if you don't mind, Kathy, go first, and then uh, what's, you know, just some of the reasons why you guys want to be on the Parks and Rec Board? I think my main reason for wanting to be on the board is just to allow for the community to have more things to do. It's very important to me that people get out and be together and just enjoy themselves. So it's not always about do this, do this, got to go here, got to do that. Just to come out, relax, enjoy yourself, and have some fun. Okay. And, honey? Well, probably about the same as Kathy, because I work for the Park Service for. Um, Five Rivers Metro Parks for four years and Miami County for 15. So I think I have a lot of ideals that will actually help with the parks and with the city in general. Okay. Uh, what, what are just some of the ideas you personally have, each of you, on where, what you'd like to see out of this board? Her first or me? Either, either one. Um, some of the things I'd like to see would be some smaller activities for smaller groups, maybe like 25s or something like that. Maybe some young kids, maybe some older kids, you know, maybe some mixed activities. I would love to see our seniors and our young ones get together, do some fun stuff together. And it really is fine with me, I don't really care. But I'd like to see, in a perfect world, I'd like to see a small event and a large event every month. And I know the budget really isn't there for that. But I would like to strive for that in the future. That would be great. Great, thank you. And I'd like to see the parks, and I'd like to see us take them to a more like a natural play area. In a natural play area, um, 
you're using your trees and things as park equipment. Um, it keeps the park equipment, it keeps the prices down low. The kids love it. I mean, what kid wouldn't want to go in a big pile of dirt and dig rocks and find fossils? <laughs> and so I kind of lean towards that. Also, um, we, as we were talking and Randy, we were thinking if there's a way that we can do some kind of type of program once a month for our seniors, because we don't really have anything for the seniors now. Okay, very good. Council, any other questions for the two ladies on this interview? Okay. Jeff, not Mr. Brown. Okay. Um, do I'd like to see if anyone would have a motion to vote? I will make a motion to Sorry. accept both of the young ladies. Second. Mr. Cobb. Cobb? Okay. So we have a motion to accept um, Ms. Mola and Mrs. Wright to the Parks and Rec Board? Correct. Okay. Any discussion now? Um, we got an email, some of the things that the Parks Board would like to do. I printed it off to bring it. Of course, naturally, it's still sitting on my printer. But I'm impressed with uh, the thought and the planning that is going into some of these things. I, I um, I'm looking forward to some exciting things in the parks this year. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Anyone else? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. Please. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. We appreciate the report. Thank you. All right, down to Mr. Bridge and his wonderful submit report. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, and members of the public. Uh, under informational items, of a new, we do actually have a, a building update. So the estimates, um, they are being completed. Um, we're now estimated about two weeks out. Uh, we're having two companies give estimates on that. Uh, and once that second estimate comes in about two weeks out, that will be going to bid. Um, I did get a Gantt chart last week, but I did send it back to update it. Um, so uh, once I get that back to, um, to because it's going to account for the second quote we're going to get, uh, that's, that's going to be about two weeks, so that's going to push the original bidding off about two weeks. I will definitely share that with council. Um, but yeah, we are working on the estimates. Uh, it has been told to me that market prices have since all come back into uh, about what they should be given the Memorial Day tornadoes. So we are very excited, uh, kind of nervous to see what that estimate's going to be. Uh, but we'll have some uh, more uh, fine lines numbers here in the next week or two. 2020 operating budget that has been on this particular city manager report for quite some time now. We are looking at adopting that 2020 appropriations measure on 3-9 uh, or 323 of 2020. Uh, we are always aiming for the 9th of March. We do have to have that uh, approved by council by March 31st and submitted to the county. And that is a ORC requirement. And then we should have uh, work sessions in early, uh, January, early February. So um, I know council has discussed maybe having a single day work session. Um, I would like to maybe look at some of those dates if possible. Um, if we need to have maybe a couple of them. Um, I don't want to wait to the next meeting. Uh, if, we have, if we do wait to the next meeting, they should probably happen either later that same week of the meeting or the immediate week after. If you guys wanted to look at your schedules and get back to us on that second one. Um, since we are looking for that all day event, as some council members have suggested, uh, work schedules may need to be taken into consideration for some council members. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Bridge, we'd also discussed prior to the meeting having a work session for that. Mm -hmm. Rather than a, a lot of them don't want to come spend all day Saturday. So if we come in several hours before the meeting, regular meeting, and, and go through it. Well, I think we're going to need probably a few more hours than that to get through. If we're going to do it all in one day, as it was suggested before. And that is up to you guys. If you want to break it up, I mean, you guys let us know how you want to handle those work sessions, and we will facilitate what council wants to do. Like I said, in years past, how we did it, we did evenings, and it would be, you know, three evenings, we'd do a cover of it, this, and then you kind of lost steam, you know, after the first one, it's kind of hard to pick up where you left off, you know, so I'll, I'm all for the single day event. I'm all for splitting it up, but again, it's up to what think, uh, councils think is best for them as a group. 
Did you die, Mr. Powell? Yeah. Okay. Um, I originally was in favor of the uh, all-day event, but I think that might make it harder for some people that want to come and listen in, uh, hard for them to participate. So, I mean, I don't mind breaking it up if no one else well, how, how would council feel about like two uh, two afternoons where we do like a uh, one thirty or two to like maybe five in the afternoon in the evening? Saturday. I would prefer not a Saturday. Um, that was mentioned. <laughs> Me too. That's why I was. Yeah. yeah. So if it's like a Tuesday night, you know, do it at you know two o'clock. So I know you. Uh, some of our council members work. They can work a split shift or can get the availability if needed. But then we have some council members that may work late at night. So I think at the around at two o'clock, if we do two to six or two to seven, we'll, we can knock a large chunk out of it, you know. Um, maybe set two of those dates, see what we get through on that first. Five hours is a long time, I did, you know. Um, we may be able to get through most of it, you know. I like to start at two because mm -hmm. it doesn't, that way it also doesn't keep you real late after your normal schedule. Yeah. I mean, I know you'll, you'll stay at what we do what you need to do, but I respect your hours. I appreciate that. Yeah, What's difficult, I just got a dog, so it's just, I just need to be, be respectful to that animal and get him in and out when I can, so. How does council feel? Any particular time frame that you guys would prefer or like or times? I wouldn't like Saturdays. No, 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 me either. But I mean, are you guys okay with going at two mm -hmm. to five or six or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I couldn't do Saturdays. I have yeah. a commitment. But um, two to six would be fine. Okay. Two to, two to uh, just the time frame, not the day. Two to six. Would that work, Ms. Eggleston? Okay, so yeah, now you just need a day. What day works for you, sir? Friday. <laughs> uh, what, what week are we looking at? I would prefer not to do any this week because we still have a lot of prep we got to do. So if we start next week. Like maybe a Tuesday. Tuesdays. Tuesday or um, we have a park and recs meeting uh, that starts at one. We can That's maybe get them out around two, then start right after that. Or I don't want to step on anyone's toes back there. If we do it on a Tuesday, um, the 12th, uh, I have a two o'clock meeting with Councilwoman, uh, Councilwoman Eggleston in, um, uh, for thriving local economies that have to do with food deserts. The 13th, I'm open and the 14th night open. That's a Thursday and a Friday. And then we are closed that 17th for President's Day? Yes. On that following Monday. Right. I can do the 13th, 14th. I don't know about my bounds. I can't. Can or can't? Can't. From two to six. You can't do the 13th or the 14th? I'll make a beat around. Oh, okay. I can do it. So, well, are you busy all this week? Yes. What, what if we did the 18th and 19th? Are you in town? Is anyone in town for that one? The 18th is a council meeting. 18th correct? is a council meeting. So we can just go into that and go right into our work session. Yeah. And that so way we'll have an extra hour. If we six, need to, six, if we have two departments to finish up, we can just knock it out in the work session and don't have to come back for the second. Yeah. Yeah. Is everyone okay with that? With me? Is it good? Uh, let me finish here. Oh. Have to cancel two classes, but I can't do it the 18th. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, let's, um, I would. Well, at this point in time, we just want to set it for the next discussion in the next meeting. Yes. So, you said the 18th you couldn't come, Councilman Hopkins? Councilman right. Hopkins? I what about the 19th and 20th? I could do 19th. And I could do 20. How about 20 and 21? 20 and 21. Thursday and Friday? No, Friday. Uh, Friday, that I have a storm debris meeting. Okay. I could. Have I can, but I, I'm just going for an observer, so if I can, I can have Howie go in, if that's fine. If the council doesn't on that day, I can. So you're saying 19 and 20? Yeah, I don't need to go to that meeting. I just wanted to go for information because it has to do. 19 and 20 is okay? 19, 19 and 20? You well, I thought said something was to 20 and 21. You said no Friday, right? No, I can do, I, I was trying to get it to Thursday and Friday so I didn't have to cancel one of my classes. Oh. Well, I could do it Thursday, but Dale, you said no Friday. No Friday. I would rather not Friday. 
but it's not imperative. Could you do Friday morning? May 19th, and then you could finish yep. the following work session. Mr. Sir, let's just, can we do it all one day? Take a Saturday and do it? Uh, me personally, I'd rather not bring administration <laughs> on the He's 24 7 anyway. <laughs> I don't want to do that for his sake. For their sake, they need their days off. Plus, I stay with my mom on Saturday, and it's something I can't get out of. I'd have to hire a nurse. Well, we're closed on the 17th for President's Day. Well, let's do it that day. About 17th and 19th. <laughs> I'm not trying to come off the work. 17th and 19th? Uh, no, no. What day do you have classes? Tuesday, Tuesday, and off Wednesday, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. How about Monday and Thursday? Since she has classes Tuesday and Wednesday. Mr. Bird, Monday and Thursday that week? The 17th. I We are closed the 17th for President's Day. Okay. Well, let's, you're going to gonna have to bring the finance director in, aren't you? Yeah, you know, I mean, how will happen? So that would be your overtime on Monday. Well, we're all salary. We don't get overtime, but it's a Thursday and Friday. But he said he would if we couldn't come up with anything else, right, Dale? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Thursday and Friday. Twenty and twenty-one. Please. Twenty and twenty-one. Uh, two. two to six. Are we? Two to six. Is that what it is? Yeah. Twenty twenty-one. Two to six. I'm good with that. Mr. Graham? Aye. Mr. Kowalski? Yes. Mr. Cook? No problem. Sir? 20 and 21. Although if I can, I'm not. <laughs> Tell you what, we'll tentatively suit for tentatively. the 2021. Everyone check their calendars and then we'll have the next meeting because it's the 18th. Okay. So 20 and 21, tentatively. And if, we, if it is a must that we have to do the 17th, it's fine. I'll just take another day off. And I just I have to redo my plans. I already have. All right, not big deal. All right, moving on from there, Mr. Bridge. Hey, TCC appointment, Transportation Coordinating Committee. We had um, uh, uh, Councilman uh, Cook is was on, was an alternative. Um, we had a, the Vice Mayor, uh, Mr. Lindsay. He is no longer on council, but he was the main person who goes. So we need a uh, main appointee and an alternative. And uh, basically, it's a two-year term, and they go and they talk about transportation needs in the in the county. Um, the alternative only attends when the main appoint a main appointee cannot. But we do need a motion to have a main and a alternative put in. If you do go on behalf of the city, uh, we'll uh, you can put in for your mileage reimbursement, and we'll get you get get you paid back. So you need both a main and an alternate. How often do they meet? Uh, mm, once a month, once every quarter, something. Yes, please. Sometimes it's once a month. Uh, they take. Uh, I don't think they have any in July, but usually about once a month or at least every two months, mm -hmm. and it starts. <coughs> at, uh, you know, yeah, uh, it's in the morning around what? Ten, I think. Yeah, I think. So. And it's usually over an hour. They have a Mr. Kiko, our service director. He's on that since he did shares with our roads, and then we have a council person. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I would have problems with ten in the morning. <laughs> Anyone else? Interested? I think it has to be done. I think there was a resolution or ordinance passed by the city when they started this that they would have people attend. So it's all due respect. I don't think it's a. It's, it's, I think it has to happen. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll take the uh, first choice. Yeah. I'll take the alternate. Don't work. Good Main and alternate. If it's okay with them, yeah. You're going to be able to yeah, go if Mr. Cook goes and you got to work? As long as I know ahead of time. Well, if Mr. Cook cancels at last minute, that may be an issue. Okay. Do you think the alternative should be someone who is able to go at the drop of a dime? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Mr. Mayor. Sir. May I make a comment, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, when I was on the, the main on the TCC committee, 
there was several times in the last two years or so that no one went because the alternate wasn't available to go. And they don't like that, do they? Uh, or is that? I never heard any feedback, but okay. I mean, they like for the representatives to be there uh, because you do have voting power. There is uh, lots of decisions to make, and anybody that hasn't been to that meeting, it's quite an eye opener as to what going on. Is there a particular day that that meets? I think they do it on Thursdays. I could do. I could do that. And it, uh, <coughs> yeah, I believe it's Thursdays they do. They do them, and it starts at uh, 10 a.m. And like I said, it's usually over by. Sometimes it's over by 11, maybe 11:30 at the latest. Mr. Nikowski, you heard that? With that? Yeah. Okay. Who was the main Mr. Cook? Mr. Cook mm -hmm. and Mr. Nikowski. And they will send out the agendas to you uh, through via email. Do you do a motion to the two members? Okay. So I need a motion to. Accept. You'll do the motion. I do need to bring a resolution at the next one to, to go through the. Last time we appointed Mr. Lindsay, Mr. Cook was done by resolution. So I need to know who it was tonight in order to write that resolution okay. for, next, for, okay. for next week. Gotcha. So, so a motion to add Vice Mayor Cook and Councilwoman Nowakowski yeah. to the, to the CCC. CCC Coordinating Committee right. Board. I'll make the motion to add Mr. Cook and Mrs. Nowakowski. Second. Second. Ms. Hawkins? Okay. When you're ready. Okay. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yeah. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you. Hopkins with us. One second, sorry. I'm taking some notes about that iPads, iPads, uh, city council has been purchased iPads. So right now they are in our IT department, getting all nicely formatted, getting set up with their email addresses. Um, um, they have a training session on March 3rd at 5 p.m. That is before the start of the work session. But uh, what that's going to do is heavily reduce how much paper that we put out. This particular packet was 56 pages long. And then we make some for the audience and make some for the council members. So we're gonna reduce uh, how much we put out on paper and that's re in return going to reduce our copy release cost, our color cost, all the things associated with paper printing. So um, we did, we found um, a really good deal. We got 12.9 inch iPad Pros from a year and a half ago for $829 uh, refurbished from directly from Apple. So a uh, great buy on those, but we are very happy to actually um, give them to council members so they can just follow along on their iPad um, with no actual hardcore paper. Um, I will still bring out maybe um, for the citizens uh, the agenda and the minutes from the prior meeting, but we're going to get away from the full-blown packets just because it is a lot. The packets are always available in its entirety on the city's website, so you're more than welcome to look at that, download that, print it yourself, or actually just bring it on your personal device. Uh, intergovernmental meeting, we had it here on Monday, January 27th. It was a great turnout. Uh, we did host that event every quarter. They have one in different area jurisdictions would host it. I think the next one is at Bethel Township. But what those are, it's a school board meeting essentially, but then they get the other governments in the area around. So it would be the city, New Carlisle City Council, the Bethel Township trustees. We got some state representatives in there. If you've never been to one of these meetings, I highly recommend you at least go and check it out. The amount of information that is there and the amount of networking connections you can make. Kyle Kohler's there, he's a state rep. So, I mean, you have a lot of good opportunities there to actually meet some great people. Um, so, again, if you haven't attended one of those, definitely definitely check that out. Um, and then we have health stats from our health facility. So those are attached uh, with this one. So if you have any questions on that, just please let me know. That's all I have for the city manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions. Thank you, sir. Please be informed as always. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. As I was looking through here on dates and times, I have on my calendar a council work session for the 7th. What day is the um, Friday first the meeting 7th. in March? The, this is February 7th. Why is it there? Are we having a meeting? Um, hold on, let me, let me look at that. Because it's the first, it's the training session should be, it's, March, it's the first meeting in March at five o'clock. Right, not the training session. 
this is a council work session that I have on my calendar. For what day? The the I don't have anything, and I haven't ran a legal ad for a meeting, okay. so. Right. I don't have anything. Yeah, I don't, okay. oh, got Well, Thank now you. you made me think, because I think I got it wrong in my city manager report. I have it as March 3rd. As March no, the first I have meeting. it as, that's on my calendar, too. March, the first meeting in March is March 2nd. So it's yes. actually a March 2nd, right. not 3rd. That was my bad. <laughs> but I don't know where you got the 7th from. Okay. None. <coughs> all right, you're all finished up, Mr. Bridge? Yeah. Council, any other questions for Mr. Bridge on the city manager's report? All right, now we'll drop down some comments from members of the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium and give us your name and address for the record and try to keep it to five minutes, please. My name is Carol Bellhorn. I live at 200 Funston Avenue. Um, I've always been really pleased that our council has started their meetings with prayer and even though I wasn't at last the last meeting, I watched it on YouTube and was very unhappy and disappointed with council's actions in regarding the uh, removal of prayer from the agenda. Um, this country was founded on Judeo-Christian principles and that is evident in all kinds of government uh, actions. You can see it in government buildings, the national governing bodies, the Senate and the House, and the state Senate and House all start their meetings with prayer. Many other uh, city governments start their meetings with prayer. We have a reference to God in our pledge. It's on our money. I just, I respectfully request that you change your actions from last time and go back to the way it was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else have comments or questions tonight? All right, moving on. Thank you very Mayor. much. Oh, I think someone was raising their hand. Where? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir, I didn't see it. Afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Alex Muller, uh, 711 South Burnett Road. Uh, currently a candidate for county commissioner, but I wanted to point out how important it was, uh, especially for folks, to be involved in the transportation discussion right now. Currently, the Department of Jobs and Family Services uh, in the county has a lot of money on things such as the opioid crisis and grant money. Um, but a lot of those folks have to be registered with the department in order to receive some of those things. Um, so that is a big discussion uh, right now because obviously the, de uh, the department is located on Lagonda Avenue uh, in downtown Springfield. So uh, I just want to talk about that and also how important it is also for some of the medical transportation as well. So a lot of important conversations going on there. So I just want to stress that importance. Thank you Thank very you. much, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? All right. Committee reports done tonight. We go to resolutions. Ms. Berner, when you are ready, please. Okay. Um, one resolution this evening. Resolution 20-02R, introduction, <coughs> public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Clark County Emergency Management Agency, the Clark County Hazmat Team, and the New Carlisle Fire and EMS Division. No, I can't. Council? Make a motion to accept 20 on 10. Second. 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 Okay. Cook. Okay. I'm calm. That's cool. <laughs> We got to get our signs together. Yeah, he's been around Randy too much. <laughs> uh, explanation to this resolution: I went over it in the work session just a little bit, but it's an agreement between uh, Clark County Emergency Management and also Clark County Hazmat Team, uh, basically just the use of a gator. I'm going to let our fire chief explain it a little bit better, since it is would fall under his jurisdiction. 
The uh, county EMA office has two gators. One stays with the command post and the other one is on a trailer. Uh, we've been asked to house that gator. Uh, what we'll do with it, it will it'll be housed in the garage next to the fire station on a trailer. Uh, basically what we'll be responsible for basically is just no uh, financial maintenance of it at all. Uh, just basically doing a checkout. But what it gives us as the city is we have open use of that gate or anytime we need it for anything for the city as far as emergency uh, situations or anything else. Uh, say we have a, uh, someone that's hurt on the bike path. We do not have a vehicle right now that I can put on the bike path. They had to be hand carried from the bike path to the medic. With the gator, with having that ability to use that gator, I can send one met one crew member with a medic, one crew member can grab the gator, back it off the trailer and go, and go to the bike path and use it for that. We can also use it when we have the uh, Heritage Fly Festival, we can use it for that. Um, any other events in the city, we have open, open use of it anytime we want it. Uh, what we'll be responsible for is say that the county has a um, incident that they need that gator. We would hook it up to our battalion vehicle and tow it to them wherever, wherever it need be, which is no problem. I'll be the point of contact for that. I need myself or one of my crew members can easily tow that to that scene. But uh, it basically one puts us in a um, more active role with the county, uh, with the county EMA. Uh, the county EMA office has been a big, tremendous help to the city, to, uh, to me and to the city. Uh, but also, too, it also opens us up to being able to have a gator, because uh, it's already equipped with a backboard sked on the back um, without us having to purchase one. Council, any questions, Mr. Cobb? Chief Trustee, we have any hazmat trained people in the department? Yes, sir, we do. Okay. Would we handle a hazmat incident? No. What we would do, we would we would secure the scene, and we would call for the county hazmat team. We have any booms or pads or anything like that. We have some we have some absorber pads and we have some absorb all that type of thing. Any more with a hazmat incident, you're better off not trying to contain it. You're better off not trying to deal with it. Let, call a hazmat team and let them deal with it. We have two hazmat teams at our disposal within 10, 15 minutes of us. Uh, we have the, the Springfield Hazmat Team. We also have the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base Hazmat Team, uh, which is very highly equipped. Um, and they're under the County Mutual, or the Miami Valley uh, Mutual Aid Package, where all we have to do is, make, is have dispatch call in the works Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Council, any other questions? <coughs> when you're ready, please. <coughs> Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Thank you, ma'am. Moving on to your ordinances. All right, moving on to ordinances. We have a lot tonight. Interesting. Ordinance 2020 01, public hearing and action tonight. In ordinance amending section 246.09 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding employee benefits. Council. So move. Second. I got a question here. Don't you have a B there that you got to go through? You got an A on resolution 2002. You got a 2001. What? What's, what's going on? I just read it. We just voted on this. Yeah, we voted on the first one. No, we voted on the resolution right up there. Okay. My fault. Good. And now I'm right here on A of I got ordinances. You. I got you. Okay. It, it, it confused me most of the times I wrote this. I'm trying to rush it, you know. <laughs> Did we have a motion in a second? Um, I heard Cook. Second. Cobb. Okay. Thank you. Who got the second? I got Eggleston. Uh, I didn't hear her. Cobb? Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure I got right. Sorry. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Uh, explanation of this ordinance, we had went over the work session as well. Uh, but right now, what this does is allow the city to do one uh, deposit into the city employee's HSA account, opposed to monthly. And then what's going to happen is the monthly contributions are still going to go on, but it's the actual employee contribution. What happens is, is we have employees trying to pay the medical bills at the HSA account, and since we do it monthly, 
sometimes they have to borrow from themselves to do that because it's not covered. They don't have enough, enough in their HSA account to do so. Thank you, sir. Council, any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge? When you're ready, Ms. Murray. All right. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Thank you. Moving on to a B, Ordinance 2020 02, public hearing and action tonight, and ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the city's collective bargaining unit. So moved. Second. Eggleston and Grimm. Uh, explanation of this ordinance um, we have a, a union agreement. There are some ch uh, slight changes that we want to make in that agreement that we have with our uh, employees. Uh, one has to do with rest periods that I would like for them to clock in and out for their personal 15 minute break in the AM and PM. That's going to allow as a city just to better track our time. Uh, the, all, the second amendment to that CBA agreement would be the health insurance they just passed with the um, yearly uh, contribution opposed to the monthly contribution for employee for the employer. And then also to Article 34 in the union agreement, we really want to look at our uh, severe weather clause. We had a, an issue uh, a couple, like a month ago, we had electricity out in the city building. It caused some confusions about what city employees got to home, go home and which ones did not. So what we did is we kind of looked at that severe weather clause and made it a little bit more um, less gray area. It's more black and white. Uh, and we did that with uh, myself in the meeting, uh, Dave, our employee chapter chair, and also Scott Thomason, who's the big union rep from the city of Dayton. So, um, that is what we have in front of council tonight, just to make three slight changes to the current collective bargaining agreement. Thank you, sir, very much. Council, any uh, questions on this? And again, when you're ready, please. Oh. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. All right, there's no more voting. The rest are all read only this evening. We have C, Ordinance 2020 03, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on February 18, 2020, and Ordinance Amending Section 1040 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding the delivery of bills and fees for credit card and debit card payments. Ordinance 2020-04, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18th, 2020. Pen ordinance amending section 1042 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, regarding the delivery of bills and fees for credit card and debit card payments. Well, that would have been a, is that a repeat? Mm -hmm. No. Nope, it's different numbers, we're good. All right, ordinance 2020-05, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18th, 2020. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to purchase a new pickup truck for the cemetery department. Ordinance 2020-06, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18th, 2020. And ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a memorandum of agreement with Security National Bank for the deposit of public funds. Ordinance 2020-07, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18, 2020. And ordinance amending chapter 248 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding city policy. Ordinance 2020-08, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18, 2020. An ordinance amending chapter 246 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle regarding employees generally. Ordinance 2020-09, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on February 18, 2020. An ordinance amending chapter 276 of the codified ordinances of the city of New Carlisle, Ohio regarding boards and commissions. I think that's it. No. Would you like me to read other business? Please. Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1.30 p.m. until 2. The city offices will be closed on Monday, February 17th to observe President's Day. All right, thank you very much. Now we're in the business. I would like to make a motion to put the invocation back into the minutes. Second. 
into the minutes. But counts on the agenda. Doesn't look like it was taken out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It says it's yeah. It says it takes uh, fifteen minutes. Say it was a second. I second. He did. Why not? She did on the first one. She said minutes, and then she corrected it. And said okay. It. Okay. Does that make sense? You're good. Okay. You got it. Ms. Back on agenda, yeah. right? Yes, in agenda. Okay. And you are the second. Yes, I'm good. I'm caught up. Okay. That's one discussion on this. I had said during the work session that I wanted to put the prayer back into our meetings because I feel that uh, one thing, the citizens of New Carlisle want it. And secondly, I feel it is a right. Um, I know people are interested in separating church and government, religion and government, but um, I think it's so that government doesn't dictate what religion you do. It's not that you have to take religion out of everything. And uh, I had another reason, but I forgot. But uh, also, I feel that um, it should be put back in because I would say 75% of the people are Christian, and if you don't want to say a Christian prayer, you can say your own or silently say yours. But I do feel that it should be put back in. Oh, I am finished. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cobb. Like I discussed earlier, under the First Amendment of the Constitution, you have the right for freedom of speech, freedom of prayer. Anybody in the audience can pray out loud. Uh, you have the right to pray from the Bible. You have the right to pray with the minister. It represents uh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Buddha. Buddhism. Buddhism. Yeah. Uh, Jewish, Christians, Protestants, Catholics, uh, Mor Mormons, uh, Quakers, Amish, all of them are covered. Under. There's a bunch more. I can't remember them all. Huh? No, they're included in that too. They got done. Did they get done? <laughs> but anyhow, that is a right under the First Amendment. And I feel that we should be allowed to pray if we want to. They pray in the Ohio House and Senate before meeting. They pray, they pray in the uh, Ohio Supreme Court before they go to, go to work. So I believe it's a thing that we need to have. I mean, I'm not fully religious, don't get me wrong, but I believe in God. Thank you very much, Mr. Cook. I just have a point of clarification. When we say meeting, are we talking about our regular meeting plus the work session? All I need to know. Clear. Anyone else? No I'm not saying that it's a matter of law. I'm saying that what we did last time is a matter of respect for a minority. I'm not saying it, it's just a matter of respect versus bullying. Bullying? <laughs> It, how do I want to say this? I've lived in different cultures for many, many, many years of my life. And it's just a matter of respect. It makes some people uncomfortable, and there's no need to make it uncomfortable. If we have the silent meditation, as was suggested in the last meeting, Everybody can do their prayer. It's just not stuffing it in the face of somebody who is not thinking the way you are. I don't, I don't see the problem with that. I'm sorry, but it's just a matter of respect. Good. Mr. Mayor. 
Can the government speak on this? I'm done. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman. I have been to meetings where a prayer is offered at the beginning. It is not always a Christian prayer. Um, a couple times it's been a Hindu prayer. I do not particularly agree with their beliefs, but I did not feel bullied. I stood there, head bowed, in respect. Uh, the respect comes not in yielding everything, but in just having respect for others, respecting what is, is done. You can, you can, when the Hindu prayer was offered, I just uh, silently prayed my own. That's it. Thank you very much, sir. Anyone else? Mr. <laughs> Lindsay, go ahead. Just that, well, may I make a comment, Mr. Mayor? Let me, let me go first real quick, Mr. Lindsay. Okay. Um, it's about what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, if I, you want me to say Yeah, go ahead. Stuff? Go ahead, part of the record. Everybody knows who I am, I'm sure. Uh, wouldn't that be a amendment to the rules of council that was passed at the last meeting instead of a motion to do it? We'd have to make a motion to amend the rules of council from last meeting. Section of the charter, like 240-something, says anytime you amend, it can be done through a motion to council. So they don't really have to have a resolution. They can amend their rules of council through <laughs> a motion. Is that what they're doing with the motion, amending rules of council? Because I didn't hear that. No, they're amending. She's the, making a motion to change the rules of council. Okay, yeah. so that's what the motion was for. Correct. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it was the rules of council yes, and not just a, a, a motion. Um, a few things I want to say on this was let me, I'm just going to ask the whole room and see if anybody picks up on it. Did anything else significant take place at that meeting that stands out? Do what? Did anything, I'm not asking the council. I'm no, asking but the crowd. Did anything significant stand out in that council meeting other than that? I think everything in that meeting got overshadowed by now. Right. So, I, you know, I got my call um, Friday and then today again while I was at work, I took the call from the Springfield News Talk, wanted to get my opinion on the, the whole prayer situation. And I, Respectfully told her, I said, Nothing personal to you. I don't, I, I don't want to comment on it. And the reason why is there was something so much more important in that meeting, in my opinion, than the prayer. I'm not saying prayers are important to anybody, don't read into that farther than what you need to. But, you know, six, seven years ago, I remember, you know, it was on the front page of Mr. Grimm's paper that the city had was projected to have less than what was it? $195. $195 in our general fund. And then at that exact same meeting two weeks ago, Mr. Bridges, city manager, made an amazing report that the city's looking to have 1.1, 1.2 million in our, in our 1. general fund. 1.135. Yeah. That, that number right there, 1.135 in our general fund. Uh, you know, and that's, that's a big thanks to the taxpayers, past council members, these council members, and administration of the city. Uh, I think that should have overshadowed anything in that meeting, including religion. I'm not saying it's not important to individuals. I'm sure it is. But that should have been number one topic from the newspapers to Facebook to any other conversation in town that day. New Clyde has not seen a number like that in I don't know how long, if ever. Uh, we've, we've been, exactly, we've been re ever. We've been repaving streets faster than we've ever seen. Um, but yet, the focus was on that. And it just kind of shocks me because we hear from citizens and Facebook <coughs> newspapers that New Clyde is doing this wrong. We don't trust council and administration because they do this or that. And here it is, we've proved it. We've proved with the help of citizens, council, administration, past, past council members, that we're, we're moving it in the right direction. But yet, we're focused. Not one person tonight even brought it up. I mean, I would be ecstatic to hear that. I mean, that's amazing. So with that being said, I, I understand where each person's coming from and their opinions. I'm not a religious person. It's just, it's not for me. But I think that, that the prayer didn't get removed. A verbal prayer, a verbal prayer, a verbal prayer got, I guess you could say got taken away, but it's, the prayer is still there. You just aren't going to be doing it verbally with all of council. I don't see why, why there's a, why, what's the problem with the compromise? If we got to do it out of respect for the 75%, as you say, 
Christians, why can't the 75% of Christians say, we respect the other religions and let's all have this moment that we've agreed on. And it hits everybody. Hang on. So I, I think that is a great compromise. It wasn't removed. It's still there. You can, you know, break down. I mean, there's no actual time where you have to pray. It's not on a time clock. You can do it right now. You can do it after we actually pray. Um, those are just my 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 two cents on it. I, you know, it just it, it bothers me that the, the, the general fund announcement overshadowed it because that was such an accomplishment by so many. Um, okay, what I wanted to say was another part that bothered me is not so much as the silence, but I couldn't even say prayer when I was making the motion so that we wouldn't take it completely out. I said moment of prayer and it got changed to moment of silent reflection. Okay. So, you know, we can't even say prayer and I, you know, I think all different religions call it prayer. Council, any other? Any comments? No. You held your hand up. Did you have a comment there? Oh. Okay. okay. So. All right. Um, well, I guess we will call for the vote to change it. Can you read the wording one more time, please? Um, I have to change the rules of council to to add the invocation back on the agenda. So. I'm in work session and uh, regular meeting. So we are voting to change the rules of council to add the invocation back on the agenda within the work session and regular meetings. And I have a first from Hopkins. And my second was Mr. Cobb. Correct. Okay. All righty. Councilwoman Eggleston. No. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. No. Councilwoman Hopkins. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Nowakowski. No. Councilman Cobb. Yes. The motion passes four to three. There you go. There's tax dollars that are there. Pay for the building so we can do that again. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, let's see. We are moving on. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, you brought up the $1.1 million uh, surplus. I want to stress that is not profit to the city. Correct. That is money that we can use to provide services to the citizens. Like Mr. Bridge at the joint uh, meeting uh, announced that he would like to hire a planning director. That to help position's already been filled. Good, to help move the city forward, um, <laughs> to attract more businesses. We're on our, we're, we're moving forward. Thank you, sir, well said. Anyone else? Yeah. Ms. Um, I had a couple things. Um, the uh, HGTV, contest thing um, councilwoman Nowkowski and I have spent all weekend and all day today putting together a slideshow Great. with old pictures current pictures to submit Friday for the contest so hopefully we'll get that all done and taken care of um, and also a lot of us up here on council have been wanting to push and encourage community in New Kalile. And this past week, I saw it happen. My son, who none of you guys know, and his house burnt down Monday. And I made a call to my sister and two friends and when I got home Monday night, there were hundreds of diapers, kids' clothes, wipes, dog food. Uh, we went to, we had to take the dogs to the vet 
a lady that was sitting in the waiting room paid her vet bill. And a four hundred dollar vet bill. <laughs> I, the I'm sorry, this is really hard. I have been amazed at the number of people in this town who don't know me, who don't know my son, who gave everything that they had. I asked a lady who had listed a, play, a pack and play on Marketplace if she was negotiable on the price. She gave it to me and packed the back of Linda's car with toys. My granddaughters lost everything, all of their toys, everything was in the living room and the living room was gone. Luckily, my, my kids and my grandkids got out safe and my, they got the dogs out too, so we're happy. I mean, we're very grateful. But I saw community and I know it's here and I just wish we could show it to your neighbors I, I hate to see that it takes a horrible tragedy like my son's house burning down for people to show it. You know, if you've got a neighbor who doesn't mow their yard, maybe they can't mow their yard. Go next door, introduce yourself, find out. But I wanna thank the city of New Carlisle because you showed me this last week that the community is still here. And everyone's safe? And everyone's safe. Good. Good to hear. That's, that's great to hear. You know, we all have our moments where we don't get along and bicker and argue about politics and religion, our parks being dirty or whatever the subject may be, but whenever someone needs help, I think no matter what community you're in, in the United States, we all uh, take the high road and help our friends and neighbors when they need it. So that's great to hear. Nice to meet you. You sure did. Also, um, I'm really glad to hear that, Peggy, and I was really concerned. Um, but I do think New Carlisle does band together when people need something, whether they know you or not. That's one thing I like so much about this community. Like the mayor said, we do argue over politics and different things and dirty parks, I guess. But um, Not ours, someone else's. Oh, okay. <laughs> But um, this is a wonderful community, and I'm glad it showed Peggy when your family needed it. Can, can I add something in here? Community, I've, I've worked on learning how people and businesses can build community for the last almost 15 years. It's what I got a PhD in it, and it's just become an obsession. When I grew up in New Carlisle, was in the 50s, when we moved here in the 50s, it was when there was a huge boom. I don't know if, if you could see, I found a graph today and made a graph today of how the population has exploded over the last, and in the 50s, the population in New Carlisle oh, tripled in five years. And all of those people who came in there had really, really close community. Uh, I remember when my mom was sick, she had three kids, four kids in school, and she got really sick and Every morning at 7.30, there was one of the neighbors who was there getting kids ready for school. There was dinner on our table every night. I'm not saying that in a crisis, people don't show up, but I have a, one of those sisters who lives here in town, and she and both, her husband are both wheelchair-bound invalids. They've lived in their house for almost 10 years, and they don't know a single neighbor. And yet the neighbors see somebody pull, whenever they go out, they go out in an ambulette. So they know the situation, they have to know the situation. But there's, they don't know any of those neighbors. 
There are a lot of elderly people in this community now, and some of them cannot get out and shovel snow. They can't get out and maybe mow their grass or rake the leaves. They just need some help or somebody just checking in to say, do you need anything? You need something from the grocery. I'm going to the grocery. These are simple things, but they can make all the difference to a person who can't get out and do things for themselves. I would just, I would like to figure out a way that we can incentivize that somehow so that people start to talk to their neighbors and know if they need everyday kinds of help, not replace all of our furniture and our clothes and take care of our dogs kind of stuff. That's important, but everyday kinds of things can build up. and. I just encourage everybody to think about ways that you can fit into that. Here we go. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All right, everyone, thanks for coming tonight. We appreciate the attendance. I like to do this for all the time. Some of you are excited Moved. back there. Move to adjourn. All right. I, a motion to adjourn. I was to say, I heard her say it. To Second. Adjourn. Okay. Do we vote now or do we? Yes? Yes. All righty. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilwoman Higgleston? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilwoman Hopkins? No. Yes. <laughs> you want to stick here a while? Yes. Councilman Griffin? Yes. 7 0. Seven, Thank you.